the first uh, meeting of the Politburo after the 22nd Party Congress took place yesterday at Delhi. The main agenda was to uh, discuss the division of responsibilities among all of us, and that will now go before the CC, Central Committee. That's meeting from the 22nd to the 24th of June. But we discussed the political developments, and uh, as far as Karnataka elections are concerned, the Politburo welcomed the development that the efforts of the BJP to try and cobble up a majority through horse trading, those efforts were thwarted. We acknowledged also the role of the Supreme Court in this process, and uh, we think that uh, the BJP's practice of losing elections but forming governments, like they have done in Goa, Manipur, Meghalaya, and entered Bihar after losing the election, now part of the government. I mean, this, this trend of the BJP, I mean, that has been stopped in Karnataka. And this entire uh, campaign that is being done, that BJP has been denied the government despite the people's mandate. Well, we've given you the figures here, the Congress and the Janata Dal Secular, along with the BSP, together account for 56.6% of the people who voted. The BJP, on the other hand, polled only 36.2%. That is more than 20% people who voted against the BJP and for these parties in the coalition are now supporting this government. And uh, the CM elect, as well as the former Prime Minister, Mr. Dev Gowda, have been in constant touch. They've called and have accepted, we, we are accepted their invitation to attend the swearing in ceremony tomorrow. And all the non-BJP chief ministers are also invited. So Comrade Pinrai Vision, a Politburo member, CM of Kerala, will also be attending. This, we think, is, go is going to be the beginning of a big political change in the country. And what we have decided in our party congress, that the priority before us is for the ouster of this government in the interest of India and the people. The other major thing that has been happening has been the relentless attacks on the people's livelihood. Petrol prices, I think, post-independence have recorded the highest ever. And it is even in comparison with all the other countries, including neighboring countries, we have the highest ever here. And the finance ministry officials have said that we have not yet reached the level of international oil prices to reduce the excise duties, which in other words means that the excise duties are not going to be reduced, may be increased further. Government will make, governments will make their money at the expense of the people. And accompanying this, unemployment for the youth, the agrarian distress is compounding, the growth in rural wages has actually declined in the last three years. And by all records, the last four years of uh, this government's performance has been the worst as far as the agricultural sector is concerned in independent India. Then we uh, discussed the continuing attacks on the party in Tripura after the assembly elections. This is the, both the irony and the duplicity of the BJP. That in Karnataka, they keep crying hoarse that this is the murder of democracy. But in Tripura, after they winning the election, the attacks on our cadre, attacks on our officers, even not granting permission for May Day rallies, which is an officially recognized holiday in India by the government of India, the efforts to try and see that our party daily paper does not reach the people. All these uh, things are being uh, indulged in by the BJP. And we have decided that there will be now popular resistance against all this that is happening. And that resistance, you will see shortly, will be there in Tripura. And in Bengal, you have, uh, when we discuss the situation, we have a very peculiar situation where in the panchayat elections there is a virtual democracy, I mean, murder of democracy and the demolition of any constitutional order in the state. 
Over 40 people have died in these elections. Who voted, who did not vote, what is the number of votes in each constituency, in each position, that is not known. Officially, the results are not yet officially declared. In many places, the candidates who won were actually declared as lost, and the candidate who lost was declared as won, and certificates have been given to them. I mean, this is a complete obliteration of democracy that is taking place in Bengal. And that's why we've noted that it's an irony that the West Bengal, I mean, West Bengal Chief Minister today hails the victory of democracy, so to speak, in uh, Karnataka. But she was one of the earliest to tweet congratulations to the CM elect of the BJP when the early trends were showing that they, maybe they, they'll win the election. And now she is uh, trying to parade as a champion of democracy. This double speak and this contradiction will be exposed and I think uh, this 40 people dying is also a reflection that there is now a growing tendency of resistance, a popular resistance that is building up in Bengal and people are resisting, it's no longer only political parties but people themselves are coming on to resist this sort of a denial of their fundamental rights, denial of democracy and that I think will be a movement that will pick up and consolidate in the days to come. As far as Jammu and Kashmir is concerned, we have expressed, the Politburo has expressed his really grave concern over the continuing alienation of the people of the Kashmir Valley from the center. The Prime Minister went there with great tom toming announced a ceasefire during this month of Ramzan, but that is a, a conditional ceasefire. And that conditional ceasefire is something very dangerous because any rumor, anything that happens and conveyed through the WhatsApp can be used as an excuse for retaliation, they say. The other condition is continuation of the intelligence operations. And these conditions of inter intelligence operations are the ones that have actually contributed to creating this sort of a situation in the, in the state. Therefore, what we are demanding of the central government is just mere declaration by the Prime Minister of a ceasefire during the month of Ramzan is not sufficient. The central government must, must today implement the promises they themselves have made after the all-party parliamentary delegation visited there. The Union Home Minister himself made this, uh, gave this assurance that A, there will be immediate confidence building measures, B, the political process will be started through a dialogue with all the stakeholders. This has not happened so far. The ceasefire must be accompanied with this and with this process. And on the basis of the continuation of the process, the ceasefire also should continue, even after the month of Ramzan, by initiating these two processes of confidence building measures and the political dialogue. In the meanwhile, we have said that this ceasefire should be extended also to the LOC. That would require talks to Pakistan to stop this cross-border terrorism. And those talks must resume now after the unilateral withdrawal of this uh, our government following certain attacks in the past. So unless this is done, peace and normalcy Restoring is a difficult position right now, but to even move in that direction would be difficult. And this alienation of the Kashmiri people cannot be stopped. About Assam, we are very concerned because uh, the situation is actually growing to a dimension that will spill over to the entire Northeast. The current uh, disturbances and tensions in Assam center around two facts. One, the proposed amendment to the Citizenship Act by the central government, where the amendment seeks to grant citizenship to people selectively on the basis of their religious affiliation. This, according to us, is completely violative of the Indian constitution and our constitutional provisions. 
So this, we, we demand that this bill, amendment bill, must be withdrawn immediately, and we shall oppose it in Parliament if it's not withdrawn. The second thing is the National Register for Citizens. In the implementation of the preparing of this register, there are too many problems that have been created. And we believe discriminatory methods have been adopted by the state the BJP government in the process of doing this. And this is leading to greater alienation of the people there. This has very serious consequences for the entire stability of the Northeast region. So therefore, we are asking the settled government to adhere to the Supreme Court direction on the National Register of Citizens, strictly implement those guidelines, and to immediately withdraw this amendment bill to the Citizenship Act with their move. Finally, we again ex I mean, express our very, very, very grave uh, concern at the relentless manner in which communalization of higher education is taking place in the country. Now, we have always maintained what they are seeking to do in the pursuit of establishing the RSS's fascistic Hindu Rashtra concept to replace the study of Indian history by the study of Hindu mythology. Indian history is to be reduced to mere Hindu mythology. And in that process, communal polarization that was sought to be done in our higher education and intellectual life of the country is the latest proposal in JNU, Jawaharlal Nehru University, to introduce a course on Islamic terror or Islamic terrorism. A vast majority of the academia and the intelligence are opposed to this because they say if you want to introduce such a course, then let there be a course in religious fundamentalism without targeting any one religious group. And this targeting of a single religious group is something that goes against the declared ethos and objectives of all political parties in the country. Innumerable times, the parliament has passed a resolution saying, in India, terrorism cannot be linked with either religion or region or any caste. Terrorism does not know these boundaries. Terrorism is simply anti-national and that has to be defeated by introducing such courses calling Islamic terror and are trying to isolate one religious community, this communalization of education is a very, very dangerous thing that undermines the entire foundation of the Indian constitution. Its basis, the foundation is based on liberty, equality and fraternity. These things are being destroyed by this process. The Politburo demands that this uh, be immediately withdrawn this proposal. Jawaharlal Nehru University, like other central universities, is a university created by an act of parliament. Now, if you're going to do anything of this nature, the matter will have to be endorsed by the parliament and approved. But otherwise, unilaterally, this sort of an imposition and attempt to deepen the communal polarization in education, higher education, is something that cannot be accepted. So these are some of the major issues that we uh, discussed.